yeah, it was a normal day. I had a bunch of different meetings and things like that in London. I was heading back to my office, which was in Cavendish Square. And um, I'd been in London, lived in London for 15 years and and have cars and driven and everything. And I um, certainly know which way traffic flows having walked my sons to school. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I was on my way back to the office. And, uh, you know, my last memory is certainly approaching the uh, the corner where I would have crossed and seeing a green man and rest is history. And so you uh, obviously have been told what's since happened. No, I haven't really. You it's haven't. been very unclear what's happened. Right. Um, and why is that? Because presumably there would have been CCTV of this or not? Oh, shocker. That's a good question, isn't it? Well, there was some CCTV, but uh, a lot of it uh, wasn't available, certainly during the three months after or four months or even a couple of years after the accident um, until I filed an IPCC investigation. And then secondly, some of the, I- the CCTV camera that would have been available wasn't captured in time. It was erased. So um, was anyone to blame for this? What was the actual uh, no, cause? Look, look, there's, I mean, look, I, I, you know, everyone, everyone asks me that. Who's to blame? Point mm-hmm. figures. Look, the bottom line is we have a problem. We have a problem. 77 people killed or seriously injured on Ox Street the last five years. 327 people hit in the last five years. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the issue is the problem is not to blame. We have a problem. Let's solve it. Let's mm-hmm. solve the problem. And the issue is too many people dying on Europe's busiest shopping street, too many people seriously injured on Europe's largest shopping street. And I'm here to say, look, it's not worth, you know, basically shaking the tree and screaming and yelling. It's better to say we have a problem. Let's solve it like adults, like decent thinking people. OK, so you have created this YouTube video and what you're calling for, I'm right in saying, is for a traffic ban on Oxford Street. You're currently used by more than 300 buses every hour. Yeah, I mean that's fact. I mean th- those are those are all TFL figures and figures produced by the GLA uh, Deputy Mayor Victoria Borwick, who's been one of the most intelligent thinkers on on Oxford Street politically, um, came out with a report in 2010 which recommended partial pedestrianisation and vast reduction in the number of buses. And the bottom line is you've got Central Line running east west, you have Crossrail coming, and then you have 23 TFL bus routes running east and west. Mm-hmm. And look. Those buses are empty when they run on Oxford Street. People get off to get on Oxford Street, and they get on to get on Oxford Street, but they don't transit across Oxford Street. So if you did pedestrianize it, made it safe for bicycles, made it safe for people, then this would be not just Europe's largest shopping street, Europe's probably most dangerous shopping street. It would be Europe's best shopping street. And you've spoken about um, Victoria there, who, of course, does with transport. I mean, what reaction are you getting from, from the mayor on this one? Is this likely to happen? Uh, well, none whatsoever. I wrote the mayor, I think, one of the best letters I've ever written in my life and sent it to him on March 30th, 2011. I haven't heard back from the mayor. Well, so, that's, hey, that's, Boris, that's not I'm here. Good. You got my address? That's not very good at all, is it? No response from the mayor. Well, obviously, you uh, put that to him in the future when we speak to him on, on LBC. Well, just tell him to answer my letter. It was a great letter. And, you know, the bottom line is he recognizes it's a problem. He called, he called Oxford Street a, red, a, a wall of red metal. He understands it. Boris mm. is an incredibly smart guy. He's probably the best representative this town has ever had. And, you know, the bottom line is I would love to see him leave the mayor uh, dumb whenever he wants, but with Oxford Street a great place. I, and right now it's yeah. a shame. And, of course, I mean, the fact that you were were hit by a bendy bus, it just so happens, that's not a factor in it. You want all buses gone from there. Yeah, I mean, look, bendies are gone, so that's very easy. But, no, and, look, look, the bottom line is I'm not, like, ban buses completely. You know, I I don't have a car. I take buses all the time, and it is a great form of transport. The issue is whether you need to have 23 bus routes transiting the heaviest pedestrian area in London. I don't think you do. Um, you can come up with more intelligent ways. There are 379 people at TFL that earn over £100,000 a year. They must be very smart to earn that kind of money. They must have the mm-hmm. ca- capacity to say, hey, we can solve this problem. And Tom, uh, finally, uh, when you did have this accident in 2009, you suffered severe brain trauma and, and punctured mm-hmm. both your lungs. What is your uh, condition uh, now? How, how have you made a full recovery? Yeah, I mean, one of the benefits of having a back of head injury is you get something called the vocal fold palsy. I think my voice sounds a little more gravelly than it used to, mm. but I can do a really good golem. I can say, Masters is very good to me, and things like that <laughs> very well. 